Hello there good people, it's your boy Johnny J and welcome to another video. Unfortunately, we won't be going out in the field for a few weeks because I went filming a YouTube video for you guys to take you out uh, into the field and uh, this happened. And how do you like the colour? Gotta love that purple. Nice. So yes, I have broken my wrist, which means I'm out of action when it goes to going in the field anyway for the next five weeks. It happened about a week ago. So that's why there's been a bit of a delay with the last couple of videos, but um, hey, we're getting into it now. And in this week's video, I wanna to talk to you all about composition. I've got three steps, three steps to easily get a perfect landscape composition every time. Of course, it takes practice and it takes refining, but keeping these three things in mind is really gonna help you, you know, nail that composition no matter what the situation, okay? All right, let's jump into them. So the first step, I call it stop and chill. <laughs> Cause you know what it's like, you get out in the field, you're all excited, you see a bit of a light happening or the clouds blowing in, you start getting a bit giddy, you get your camera out, you plonk your tripod down and put no thought into your composition and you try and get a shot and then when you get home, you get really disappointed. So this step is all about stopping and chilling. And the key to this is making sure that you get out in the field before the peak light. So if you're going for sunset, give yourself a couple hours before. If you're going for sunrise, you know, scout the day before, have a bit of an idea of the location you're going to, you know, really, really important there. So what I recommend you do is you get out to the location and sometimes you'll have something in mind. You know, there'll be a big headland or there'll be a tree, a single tree, or there'll be some subject that you've already had predetermined for the location you, you've gone to to shoot, okay? And that's fine. So you've already got that first key element of your composition lock down. If you don't, if it's a brand new location, you wanna spend some time. Don't get your camera out, walk around, find something that makes you stop and go, wow. Oh my God, oh, that's what I'm looking for. That's something I'm super interested in photographing. And when you find that first key thing, then it's, a, then it's time to look around and look for other little things. So say you get out to a location, there's an epic sea stack and you go, wow, that's the sea stack. I'm going to photograph that, cool. All right, so what can I see around it that can, I can help you know, uh, complement that main thing that's made me stop and say, wow, okay? And we'll get into some um, examples a bit later on, but we'll get through these steps first, okay? So that's it, stop and chill. Take in your surroundings, look what's happening with the light, look at the clouds, look for the main subject or the thing that's made you stop and go, wow, or go to that location, and, uh, and then find little things that can support that. If you're struggling to find supporting elements, then maybe what you wanna do is not think of a wide angle composition, you wanna get your long lens out, zoom in and pick out the details. All right, that's step one, stop and chill. So the second step is build the composition. What I mean by this is you found your main subject, you've you found your supporting elements, now what you wanna do is place them nicely in the frame so that we've got a nice harmonized composition, okay? And how we do that is we get our camera out, we've got our lens on that we've selected, we're gonna go long, we're gonna go wide, okay, for our landscape shot. And we're, we're moving up, we're moving down, moving left, moving right, we're getting our elements like puzzle pieces in the frame put together so that uh, we've got a nice strong pleasing composition to the eye. So a couple of things to take into account when you're doing this is look around the sides, do your border control, is there any distracting elements? Is there anything in your scene that doesn't complement your main subject, okay? So that might mean you have to remove that thing out. It could be as simple as just zooming in. It could be as simple as just taking a step left and right, okay? Doing that border patrol around the outside of your frame, make, making sure there's no distracting elements, you know, a little branch sticking in or something like that. Sometimes we have to choose a composition where there is a distracting element, okay? But we know we're gonna remove that in post and get a cleaner composition. So building out the composition, this is the fun part. This is where, you know, the creativity really comes in, you know? You get to build out those elements in your frame so it's pleasing and you get a harmonized composition. And that's the, this is the really important part. 
So step three, refine and tweak. And what I mean by that is you're taking your photographs now, you're waiting for peak light, but as you're taking your photographs, you're reviewing them back on your camera and you're tweaking slightly. Sometimes it might be just a slight little tripod movement. Sometimes it might be, you know, you have to adjust your composition from portrait to landscape because, you know, the cloud structure has changed and you're not gonna get the light you wanted. But we're just forever reviewing. Every time I take a photograph or a series of photographs, I'm always quickly playing them back and quickly scanning around and making sure nothing has changed from my original idea of my composition. So refine and tweak. Cool, all right, let's jump on the computer and I'll just talk you through a few photographs here and a few things I was thinking as I was taking these photographs and uh, hopefully you'll see these steps come into play, all right? All right, the beautiful Cannibal Bay in New Zealand on the South Island and I remember this morning we were quite rushed um, we were a bit late for the for the sunset and we ended up running down the beach and I remember just up behind this there was a bit of weed and bits and pieces and I just thought to myself, simple, I want it simple, I want it clean and that's what this uh, image represents to me. I could see my main subject being reflected there into that beautiful rising sun, those epic colours and I could see those lines sweeping diagonally through the frame. So the idea here was to just simplify things, walk forward until I was had a really clean foreground reflection, use those leading lines to pull myself to the headland there and uh, that's what we've got, a nice, clean, simplified image. If you're going through those three steps, uh, that can happen within two minutes, it can happen within 30 minutes. It just all depends on what you're seeing and what you're feeling at the time. So those steps, it just depends on the location, it depends on how you're feeling and how your creativity levels are. And it also depends on what you're seeing in front of you. Obviously, we got to a location like this at the beach, first thing I seen was, oh, look at the shape of that headland. That's crazy. Look at the sun direction, we've got cool clouds. I wanna move down. I know I wanna get that reflection. Um, I think I'm gonna go in landscape orientation because the shape of the clouds and the uh, foreground lines um, look better as a, you know, sweeping through the scene from left to right here, pointing you directly towards that headland. So all those factors help me make the decision to go in a landscape orientation. I know I can get away with a very close center horizon because I've got a reflection in this one and um, all together I think this turned out to be a really lovely photograph. All right let's have a look at this one something a little different okay I knew we were predicted to have fog I hadn't scouted this location it is a local location that I've been to before so I did get there and see the fog I knew my light direction okay so now I thought you know what better when you've got fog to have something back it so I already had it predetermined that this photograph was going to be backlit. So I put myself in the forest in a location where I know I can get backlit trees, okay, in fog. And uh, so those things are already decided before I even get on location. So when I get there, all's it, all it's a matter of is waiting for that sun to come up, backlight that beautiful fog. And composition wise, just knowing that I couldn't get so close to these trees because they were off the road through like a, a boggy marsh. So I had to put on a longer lens to get the reach to, to frame this photograph. So that was a decision made by, by limitations on the location. And then it was a matter of just moving left and right to find the most pleasing separation between all my elements. And you can see here, you know, mostly we've got quite a, a balanced Photograph, if I was to pick anything about this photograph, would be this tree here, you know, crossing into the back of the other one. But sometimes you have to make creative decisions. You know, I remember moving back and forth, left and right, trying to work out exactly where the most pleasing separation was between all these trees. And you can see by getting that separation quite even and quite balanced in the frame, um, we got a lovely, lovely fog photograph. Just awesome. So this was a shot that just happened by mistake. And what I mean by that is, I was out filming another YouTube video and I remember walking back and the sun was setting. We'd um, filmed a wildlife uh, bird photography video and uh, I was heading back and I just saw this single tree and I saw the light, the sun just peeking out of a gap underneath the clouds there and I'm like, oh, this could be on here. So um, I found my main subject. 
I saw the beautiful cloud layer, I saw the gap in the cloud layer, so all those elements were looking good. The challenge was this one, is it isn't actually a really big tree. So I had to wade out in the water and get quite low in the composition, looking where that horizon line is intersecting in that tree. I wanted to get most of the tree above the horizon line here, okay? That's what's super important. Again, we can get away with that center horizon line being a reflection. And I also moved left and right until I found a nice pleasing spot where that sun was just bursting through one of the branches there. And I think uh, this ended up being a really lovely composition. All right, here we go. This was a macro focus stack, pretty easy. You rock up to something like this, it can still the same things apply, okay? So I, I was driving along the road, I saw this field of mushrooms, I thought, oh, I've gotta go home and get my camera. Just amazing, really, really love this. So I rocked up and I found these three mushrooms together like this. And I, I really, really like how solid a composition this was. A couple of things in decision making and where to place my subjects here, okay? So I knew I was gonna be getting down low, get my mushrooms on the plane of focus. My camera's pretty much in the grass, as low as I could go to get this shot. Placement left and right, I didn't want the little one to be intersected by this middle one here okay so I wanted a gap between the green that was really really important I also didn't mind these two intersecting you know this one being a slightly higher mushroom this one being slightly lower and then the little one sort of being framed by the middle one there so the positioning of these mushrooms was really intentional okay so that to get that and then you'll see also I position myself so that the sun the setting sun was coming in from the right hand side of the frame nicely side lighting the mushroom soft light because it was nice and low near sunset but you can see it's it's given the mushrooms more dimension i really love that side light coming in now a couple of challenges with this one there was all these brown patches in back there in the, in the background they weren't very pleasing to the eye so i really wanted to blow that out you can see part of them over in this part of the frame here Okay, so I really wanted to blow that out. So what I did was choose a quite wide aperture. I think it was around F4 or something like that. But that meant I had to focus stack my main subject. And you can see by making these creative choices in camera, you know, by moving left and right, looking at the sun direction, knowing my background was a little bit distracting, so I wanted to have a wider f-stop, that's led me to know that I have to then focus stack to get my main subject all in focus, okay? These are the creative decisions that you make and it's all based around composition. You know, you think about it, my composition's like this, I've got my mushrooms separated, I love the light direction, oh, distracting element in the background, how can I fix that? I can run around and try and pull out these brown bits of grass or whatever it was behind it. Didn't have time to do that, I was losing the light fast. So the other option is to go shallower depth of field and doing that knowing I'm gonna lose focus on my main subject means that I then have to implement focus stacking. So you can see how your compositional decisions will then relate back to your photography you know, to decisions about what lenses you use, what techniques you need to use, okay? So yeah, have a think about that. I really like this photograph. So this is in uh, Death Valley in the States and I just remember this location. We walked out into this like, I think there's like salt flats or something like that. There wasn't a whole lot there to photograph. The light was going down. Um, but then I, we walked out and found these little channels of water, which was just absolutely amazing. They were catching some reflections. They were snaking through the, the lake here. And that's what caught my eye first. I'm like, cool, I can see those mountains in the background. I can see we've got cloud out there. I can see where the sun is about to set. Now I'm looking for a foreground element to complement those things. And we found these beautiful snaking bits of water. So I've used, you know, you can see right to left up here is my composition for my water running through. And then at the top, you look at the cloud, and this is why I went into portrait orientation as well, because it gives you that opposite effect. It goes from left to right if you look at the cloud. So it's like one big S in this frame if you look at that. So you can see by piecing this frame together, I knew the sun was setting out there. Great, we're gonna get some light. There was cloud around, looking good. Background mountain or uh, background mountain range there. Cool, love that as an element. And then I walked out on the salt flat. I'm like, okay, what are we gonna put in the foreground here? Come across these beautiful snaking, you know, little streams of water and uh, using those to be the opposite of what the cloud has given a really pleasing composition here. And I actually shot this in landscape as well, but it wasn't anywhere near as strong, okay, because I found that 
in landscape, you were taking in too much of the same. And to me, it's that, that bold cloud at the top rimmed with that light down to the sun and this snaking little stream running through being opposite to the cloud and being in, in um, portrait orientation um, help complement those two elements and make them a lot stronger in the scene. And I, I really love this. This is one of my favorite photographs actually from the trip to the States. So just awesome. All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you found that helpful around composition. Composition is one of the trickiest things to master in photography. It takes time and really the way to get better at it is to just go out and practice it over and over again, taking lots of photographs and that, that's the key. Hey, one tip before you go. With composition, you know, if you're struggling with your compositions and you're not sure why, one easy way to get better at composition is find a photographer's work you really, really enjoy, that you love, okay? Get your favorite photograph and really look at it. Break it down into all the elements. Why is it pleasing to you? What are the things that made this photograph stand out to your eye? And look at the placement of elements, look where the light is, look how they've used contrast and color to direct the viewer's eye to the main subject or to really build a harmonized composition. And that'll really, really help you moving forward. I found that was one of the strongest things that I could do when I was learning photography is just looking at other people's work, but really studying it and trying to work out what they've done to build out this epic composition that's really caught my eye. All right, good people, remember those three rules. Stop and chill, <laughs> build the comp, and refine and tweak. That's the way to get strong compositions every time you're out and you'll find the more you do it, the easier it gets, and it'll just be second nature. You'll just be doing it without even thinking about it. All right, that's it for this one. If you're enjoying these videos, show me some love, give me some support, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, almost there, so I appreciate everyone that's subbed. Um, if you want to be notified, hit the bell below. And if, you know, if you've got a video you want me to do around post-processing or something I can do on my desktop, leave your suggestions below in the comments. I'd love to create those videos for you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.